Welcome to Leading Organizations That Matter, a podcast on the topics of leadership, organizational culture, and finding meaning and purpose in our work. I'm the host, Ray Spadoni, former CEO, current consultant, author, and speaker. Today's topic is tolerating uncertainty. I remember learning about the classic experiment that was conducted in the 1970s, I believe, whereby some pigeons could press a lever and receive a pallet of food. Some were given a shock before they received a pallet and others unpredictably received either a shock or the food. The pigeons who received the pallets consistently fared pretty well. Press the lever, get the food, nice. The ones who got the shock did second best. They didn't love the shock, but they adapted They knew they would receive the unpleasant jolt, but then that would earn them their food. So they learned to just deal with it. The ones who faced uncertainty, unpredictability, well, they did very poorly. If I'm remembering correctly, most of them, if not all of them, died of starvation because they couldn't tolerate the not knowing. Uncertainty, whether it's waiting for important news, or having some type of important and life-altering decision hanging over our heads is hard. We don't like it. We will do anything we can to reduce or avoid that uncertainty. Unfortunately, some of us develop unproductive or even destructive habits because of it. But uncertainty is a fact of life. It certainly is a fact of life in most organizations as we have to deal with environmental influences beyond our control or payment mechanisms that are arcane, complex, and even unfair. Or some of our funders may not be willing to give us ample notice on changes to their support levels. Sometimes key employees quit or IT platforms are hacked or pandemics hit and we're not entirely ready for them. Uncertainty happens. But not every leadership team and board of directors reacts to uncertainty in the same way. Some are accustomed to it, comfortable, and will be willing to operate for long stretches not knowing the answer to a lingering important question. But here's the rub. Some are not comfortable. In fact, they are so uncomfortable that they will develop unproductive or even destructive habits because of it. Examples, a CEO or board will fill a key impactful role too quickly or with too much wishful thinking about a candidate because keeping that role open or filled on an interim basis is just too anxiety provoking for them. Or They'll hasten an affiliation conversation, agreeing to be acquired rapidly due to declining performance. Now, don't get me wrong here. I'm not advocating dragging your feet on key decisions, but acting rashly and operating from a position of weakness rather than strength are the telltale signs of the highly uncertainty averse. The remedies? I have three. First, Openly discuss the uncertainty with leaders, board members, and even employees. All too often, uncertainty anxiety increases because no one is willing to acknowledge it. Second, come up with contingency plans. Actively plan for multiple worst-case scenarios and and then determine up front your decision Threshold points. For example, if our census drops below X, then we're going to do A, B, and C. And third, be open and honest about what is causing the uncertainty and what you as a leader are working on to reduce it. This requires openness, honesty, and displaying a fair bit of vulnerability. This last point is going to be the topic of an entire future episode. So I won't say much more here other than I believe this is the key to building trust 
and successfully leading. Study the greatest leaders of all time, and you'll see that they did not hide their weaknesses and fears. Again, this is a big topic for another day. Thank you for listening today, though. I hope you'll consider subscribing to this podcast and telling your friends and coworkers about it and providing a review on Apple Podcast or your platform of choice. Uh, that really does help a lot. Please feel free to learn more about me and my work at redsaleadvisors.com. Mm-hmm.